We're going to transition um, to our next session, which is super exciting. Um, I'm pleased and um, thrilled to invite, for the first time this meeting, our friends and colleagues. Um, Leanne Ponch is coming to us from Dermatologists of the Central States in Cincinnati, Ohio, and Darren West is from Scottsdale, Arizona at Spectrum Dermatology. So this is a great resource um, panel to talk about the things that we all use and that we go to every day to get information and also to um, help give our patients information. I absolutely love this discussion. I'm so glad to, uh, to be able to share some of the uh, tools that I use in practice on a day-to-day -day basis. Depending on where you are in practice uh, in your area of expertise, these are my go-tos. So first is this little handy dandy book called The Pocket Guide to Diagnostic Tests. Um, I use this, goodness, probably at least once a day. Uh, it's very small and uh, it really helps me with the tests that I need to order for various um, things from infections to thyroid disease and how do I rule that out to lupus antibodies. Um, pretty much everything is in here including the latest and greatest recommendations about what specific tests to order. Uh, there are some diagnostic algorithms in the back of this that I find to be incredibly helpful, uh, especially when I'm ruling out hepatitis or I'm trying to figure out if someone has a hyper hypothyroid disease associated maybe with their uh, skin condition. Uh, there's also the, the, newest, uh, the newest update includes some cost information, which I find incredibly um, useful for some patients as well. I don't know if you've seen these, um, but I'll tell you, uh, when I was first in practice, uh, these little cards, I like studied them, uh, possibly, um, you know, late at night in my bed and, you know, flipping through. There's some really concise information along with these amazing pictures. And one of the things that I think I underestimated about, I think I use this more in my pediatric world, I see a lot of pediatric patients, uh, sometimes they, they appreciate the ability to see how their disease state looks in other people. And the nice things uh, about these little resources here, they're differential diagnosis cards. They're easily cleaned because they're laminated. And so uh, I use these a lot of times with patients who are maybe a little bit questioning um, or just to reassure them, hey, you're not the only one with this condition. And I find them to be really, really helpful at this stage of my career, more so for my patients than for myself, but they're an incredible resource uh, if you're a newbie. And there's one specific to adults, and then the other is for pediatric dermatology, and it does include some genodermatoses as well. Again, here's those DDX cards, and just an example of that on the right, um, as I mentioned, very easily, easily cleaned. Other resources, uh, you know, just sometimes, obviously, the time that we have with patients is very limited. And I think sometimes with these disease states, we tend to overwhelm them with information in the room. And it's wonderful to be able to refer them to these organizations that really partner for education and for research. We also want to try to control what they're reading. Uh, and I find these organizations to be some of the ones that I recommend the most often. And I would say don't hesitate to have little cards or little um, pieces of information uh, so patients can take these home and go to the website later to pull up information and really um, kind of reiterates what you discuss from an educational standpoint in the visit. And then I'll just end with when all else fails and you really need a great resource, uh, don't forget to ask a, a friend or a peer or one of your collaborating providers. Uh, I think sometimes, uh, you know, this looks different in various, um, various situations. Sometimes it's that my patient did not respond to therapy the way that I would expect, or maybe this is a really interesting case and it's not quite presenting the way that it does in the textbook. 
Or maybe uh, you put them on a therapy and something really unusual happened. And I think there's a myriad of, of, of things that really lead me at this point in my life to pull in an extra set of eyes. I think it is definitely not about me. It's about the patient. And at this stage in my career, I love when there are challenging cases and I get to put a lot of eyes on this patient and really understand what's the best way to treat this condition. If you're unsure in any way, if something's just a little off, if your patient isn't um, maybe giving you the full picture uh, and you just need someone to reinforce uh, what you're saying, don't hesitate. And um, oftentimes just identifying who is good for what. Uh, I know there's one of the physicians in my practice who is very, um, he's very concise and uh, he will just look at a patient and in essence say, stop it. <laughs> And I, I really appreciate that at times when, when I'm you know, trying to tell them to please discontinue all of your, um, your um, you know, all of these supplements because I, I think they're actually causing rash and we have to kind of restart them one at a time and he'll come in and just you know, level it out. And um, I use them for many other things along those lines, but it's really, really helpful. Other webs, oh, I'm gonna give it to you. Thanks, Leanne. And yes, you know, we have so many resources today at our fingertips. And to your point, point Leanne, our colleagues, we sit next to every single day, and I sit next to two or three people in, in, in my practice, as we probably all do. And we should absolutely look to them for resources, as a resource. Um, you know, us older guys that have been doing it for a while, we get a little bit set in our ways, but it's very comforting that we can still talk to somebody and we need it sometimes, you know, never, never be afraid of doing that. All right, so we have everything at our fingertips, don't we? I mean, that's literally amazing. When I started this, I had a scut monkey and I had a couple of books. I was carrying hot beef around with me, you know, in my backpack. That, it, that's still fine, but it's just so much easier today with everything that we have in front of us. Dermnet NZ is a very, very awesome website. They've compiled so many pictures, so many photos, and so many therapeutic options for dermatology that it's, it's amazing. And just to have that at your fingertips is gonna be very, very amazing because, I don't know about you, but in my office, I don't have time to run out and grab a book and grab a, and come and show it to my patient. But if I have my phone, sometimes I can pull the website up or have it already out. I can show a diagnosis to a patient and say, this is what you have. This is what the pictures look like. And they go, wow, that was really amazing. I didn't realize I had that. And, and, and it really clarifies things. So our phones are amazing tools and don't be afraid to use them. And so download these, in, these resources, have them on your phones ready to go. I worked with a provider who had an AAD account. He was part of the AAD and he would give me access to the physician's access portal, which I'm not sure if you're supposed to do that, but you get more access when you do that. There's also a patient um, and public access portal for the AAD where you can get general information. So don't be afraid to go to the AAD's website. They have a ton of resources, a ton of information just for all of us to use. But if you can get your provider to help you get into the AAD's website through their login, if you aren't able to get it yourself, it's a huge resource. I think I get most of my billing and coding information from the AED website, which is really cool. Um, and, and again, drug interaction checkers. I, I haven't used the www.drugs.com that much, but it will let you know pretty much any interaction that you need for any particular drug. We don't write, you know, and sometimes we don't have time to check, but we do have newer medications that we're doing that we've been hearing about that we need to be a little bit more careful with what we're writing it with and, and, and you need to have that access to these particular websites. And of course, uh, medscape.com, that's a very important one as well. They're, they're all out there for us. One of the things that Joe and, and the DEF has been really, really good about is getting information, resources, um, videos, uh, and from past meetings, onto the DEF's website, the dermnppa.org. It's free, it's incredible. You'll hear 
live sessions, or not live, but recorded sessions of full, full length talks on any subject ranging from, you know, immunology to acne, um, just many di different disease types. And so if you scroll through there, and they're, and they're quick, they're great snippets. This is, you know, several wonderful physicians, uh, Chilla Ch Curry and, and Hillary Baldwin and Julie Harper, all of the people who we're used to hearing from, you know, for, for a lot of these conditions and other conditions. And so they're adding to this library all the time. So please, guys, get onto the DEF's website. It's for you guys. It's for everybody else. There's a foundation built and designed directly to, to bring these educational resources to all of us. Um, it's about education. And then personally, these are my two go-tos, like every day on, an eight, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, Epocrates, so if I have a quick, I need to do a calculation on a pediatric kid, um, you know, for an antibiotic or, you know, griseofulvin, or if I need some, you know, if I need to do a weight calculation or check interactions, I can do Hippocrates. Hippocrates, you should have that always on your phone. Um, and it's a great, it's a great resource. I can put every single drug one of my patients has on Hippocrates and do a quick interaction check within about three minutes. Now, you know, in, and sometimes you have to do that. We don't always have three minutes, but sometimes we need to do it. But Hippocrates is a great drug resource to just, just to see what we're doing um, with our patients in that regard. Visual DX is kind of like the other one, DermNet. I pull that out and show a picture to my patients almost once or twice a week at least on my phone and say, this is the condition you have. This is what you, you, know, you can expect. You know, they don't have access to it because it's a prescription or a subscription, but it's another wonderful resource. And I think we should all turn to that visual uh, diagnostic resource, so. Yeah, th those are great resources. I just want to reiterate, I think both Leanne and Darren suggested that there are good websites and resources to do uh, drug um, checks, medication checks, um, interaction checkers, and as the oral um, agents come to market for atopic dermatitis, we're going to need to do more of those checks because of potential interaction. So find one you like that's easy to use that you can get into quickly or as quickly as possible um, because we'll all be using those more and more as we go. So um, I guess we're dinosaurs, Darren, because there's textbooks up here. <laughs> but, I still have them. Yeah, so... We threw up some of the textbooks that we find useful. I think that we all learned from um, Andrews, very popular and comprehensive. Um, the um, Skin Diseases by Habib, again, very, very comprehensive. And that's one of the best picture books out there if you want to grab a book and show some pictures. And then comprehensive dermatologic drug therapy uh, from Wolverton is something that's sort of a gospel as well. And then I threw up this book. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but if you're not, you may want to check it out. It's called Advanced Dermatologic Therapy II by Shelley and Shelley. Um, Darren said, and Leanne just suggested also, that it's really great to get an extra set of eyes sometimes, um, even if you know what you're going to do because there really is more than one way to skin a cat, and it's nice to see the other options, and I think that's why a lot of us are here. And so advanced, therapy, advanced dermatologic therapy has those sort of options listed in there um, in a referenced way. So if you're trying a few things and it's not working, um, this textbook is actually a fantastic resource for, to dive a little deeper. So as um, Darren and Leanne have alluded to also, um, we just can't get enough information, and information is changing. Uh, we're getting more new agents. The understanding of uh, immunology is better than ever. And so the Dermatology Education Foundation is designed to be that resource, as well as the other resources we discussed. But it's designed to be a quick reference resource, resource for us that really didn't exist for nurse practitioners and physician assistants. And it's done in a way I think you all can appreciate where the information that we deliver is not watered down. It's at the same level that it's delivered in a training session for dermatologists. And um, from the you know, highest level, academicians in, in the world. So uh, we've created it for you. We'll continue, continue to add to it. We've got a really nice collection of videos and some recordings from previous meetings, and we'll continue to update that. So check it out um, if you have a chance. And then 
annually we do at least three if not four biologic boot camps. The biologic boot camps were started to help us learn how to use biologics and then monitor patients on biologics, so initiation and management. And as that progressed and our therapeutic agents started coming fast and furious, we morph it. So each quarter we have a new biologic boot camp introducing the new agents and talking about struggles and challenging cases that we have in managing patients with atopic dermatitis and psoriasis. Uh, we also have some recorded content on HS as well, and we talk a lot about comorbidities in those, so Joe, they're fantastic. Just yeah. a little side note, if you came to this meeting and you are uncomfortable with biologic therapy as a whole, or you're early in the game and you just want to get some more information about how to do it, you're feeling overwhelmed in any way, attend one of those boot camps. It is a great way to really add to your knowledge base and kind of give you a lot of little, little buckets and a huge broad understanding of how these agents work and when do I use them in practice and what do I need to think about in terms of safety considerations. No, thank you, yeah, I, I think that what we've done in the boot camps, and this came out of the boot camps, the, I, I know you can't read it, it's, but there's so much information on there. Print this thing out and have it at the office. It's kind of an uh, invaluable resource for your medical assistants and the whole office um, to look at um, as you go through your normal day. There's a tremendous amount of information on here. And, you know, just speaking practically, Sandri, who did a great presentation just a few minutes ago, was talking about laboratory monitoring. But as the new oral small molecules come to market, they talk about monitoring, but what are the guidelines for monitoring? I know everyone in here wants to know, okay, what should I check and how often should I check it? And we've developed some guidelines and suggest, not guidelines, we have a suggested panel that's comprehensive that we'll go through this morning. And it is going to be, it is available at all of the boot camps. So that's going to happen this morning. Um, we have some video series. Um, you can see Dr. Glick and TJ were there as we moved into the pandemic. The foundation switched to virtual as everybody else did. Um, but we did this video series and it was very well received. So if there's information that you'd like to have specific topics, let us know and we'll include it in our video series. We're gonna try and do maybe one a quarter, if not one a month um, into the next couple of years. Okay, and so with respect to training, um, for nurse practitioners and physician assistants, we struggle with fellowship opportunities. We get our training on the job with the luck, uh, hopefully the luck of being getting a job with somebody who will provide us the same or similar training that they had so that we can deliver care to our patients on that same level. So um, this is a resource that's designed from Andrew's Diseases of the Skin, the textbook that we looked at. So this is Dr. Boswell, who's in Fresno. He has um, hired and trained lots of nurse practitioners and physician assistants, and he loves teaching and he loves training. And he did it so many times that eventually he said, you know, let me develop a curriculum. And so he developed a curriculum that essentially is a whiteboard lesson-based curriculum of Andrew's textbook. So if you have people that are newer to dermatology uh, that want to learn the basics, um, and there's some advanced stuff in there as well. This is a great uh, way to do it as a resource. So uh, we connected with Dr. Boswell, who has this, and uh, we said, listen, listen, we do love this resource, but we want to make it more available. And let's see if, how about you can get, how, how about the Dermatology Edu Education Foundation and you work to help increase awareness of this, but let's give our database a 50% off code because it is, um, I can't tell you exactly how much it is now, but it decreases the cost by 50% when you use a DEF code. So share this with um, your colleagues. And this evening, not this evening, tomorrow night, um, Dr. Boswell is here and he will be doing a live two hour rapid fire seminar that is really cool. It's kind of a quick hitting, showing a picture, asking a question, and then going through the data. It's gonna be really a lot of fun. So um, it's a CME session, so you can pick up a couple extra hours at that session on Saturday night. So definitely wanna check that out. And with respect to training and lack of 
fellowship opportunities. Um, the Dermatology Education Foundation offers a grant program. We can award up to $10,000 um, to an individual to choose a field of study and go spend time in that field of study. It can be a week or two weeks, but at the end of that, you can then publish your information and we can help you do that. So um, choose your area of interest, apply through the website. It's very straightforward and take the opportunity to go learn a little bit more about something that maybe you don't have experience in your clinical practice with. Um, some of our faculty that are here um, may be able to serve as your mentorship site where you can go spend a week with them. So um, for MPs and PAs in our uh, undergraduate and our master's programs, a lot of us aren't familiar with writing grants and it can seem like a daunting thing to write a grant request. This is a simplified, streamlined process designed to create opportunities for us to get more exposure. So we definitely want you to take advantage of that. So take a peek at that at the website. It's dermnppa.org. And with that, I want to thank Darren and Leanne for going through our resources. Thank you.